Viewer discretion is advised. The muck had completely covered the man's form and extended two additional limbs as it crashed forward. The roar of the cheering people was absolutely deafening. He watched as the creature bashed his men and enveloped their corpses with its filthy slime. Hello everybody, I'm The Rubber. Today we bring you SCP Foundation Keter Class Object SCP-582. SCP-582, also known as a bundle of stories, is an adaptive, self-propagating meme. Its primary ability is passive reality modification. Any fictional account written about 582 will become a factual record of a manifestation of the entity, in which 582 will carry out all actions attributed to it in the narrative. These manifestations can take place at any time and place when specified. If no specific location or time is given, the manifestation will occur at any opportunity that will meet the narrative's criteria. 582's actual abilities within narrative are generally nebulous and lacking in detail. The most common format of a story involves the aftermath of its manifestation, or a short-lived encounter, rather than an explanation or justification of the events. What is known is that 582 regularly appears capable of appearing or disappearing at any place or time and that no method of terminating or otherwise harming 582 within any narrative has been successful. 582's portrayal as a godlike entity has led to a collection of commonly featured avatars. Its actual form, if extant, has yet to be featured in any narrative. Here's a list of notable manifestations of 582. Manifestation Alpha This is the most common instance of 582. Alpha is a humanoid creature standing approximately 2 meters tall and wearing thickly layered robes, often compared to burlap. The figure is hooded and no face is visible underneath. Common additional details include carrying sacks or bundles of unknown contents, in addition to the appearance of heavy bleeding. Manifestation Alpha is the least dangerous of its manifestations, with death occurring in only 23% of instances. Manifestation Beta, a hexapodal entity appearing to be made out of molten tar. Manifestation Beta will attempt to attack any nearby humans unprotected by certain preventative measures. Manifestation Beta has appeared at the same time as Manifestation Alpha on five occasions, seemingly using Manifestation Alpha as a host or a disguise. Manifestation Gamma appears as a 100 meter wide plant-like entity giving off an intense white light and substantial radiation. The strength of the radiation is unmeasured, but it is enough to be fatal to humans within 6 to 10 hours. Manifestation Gamma does not appear to take notice of any outside stimuli, and on one occasion has been observed growing out of or feeding off of Manifestation Beta. Manifestation Delta This is the manifestation in containment within the Foundation. Delta appears as a poorly defined humanoid shadow. Due to the nature of its containment narrative, Manifestation Delta is incapable of exiting its containment module or interacting with personnel. Manifestation Zeta exists within more than three dimensions, making it impossible to properly perceive by humans. Manifestation Zeta has only been encountered once in 2010, resulting in 358 deaths and a localized restructuring event. Although there were many manifestations of 582, however, its origin may be traced to an obscure American author active during the 1940s and 50s. The original works containing 582 were never published, but were discovered by several close friends and fellow amateur writers upon the author's death in 1957, who then served as the original infection vector. Below is the encounter of the author with SCP-582. Roger Legren crumpled up the fifth text-filled sheet and rocketed it towards the wastebasket. Why can't I write today? He bent over his desk and ran his fingers through his hair, resting his elbow on top of dozens of discarded brainstorming sheets covered with half-formed ideas. What's happening to me? Damn it, I just want to write how I used to. Frustrated, he grabbed a random piece of paper and began writing again. And then, the great Dam Ragravi, the master of language I just pulled out of nowhere, appeared to Roger and struck him with awe and inspiration. He became his muse, 
his inspiration, his path to better things in this pitiful existence of frustration. Ah! He ripped the sheet to shreds and tossed it over his shoulder before folding his arms and laying his head down on his desk. He stayed like this for a few moments before being struck by the peculiar feeling that something was watching him. Slowly, he turned to look behind him. A tall, man-like figure stood there with a featureless face visible under its hood and dressed in several heavy layers of a coarse brown fabric. It said nothing. It simply stood there with its head angled down towards Roger. Who the hell are you? The figure remained silent. How did you get in here? Still silent, the being in front of him raised a single finger, with no fingernail to be seen, and pointed at the scraps Roger had just torn up. Unsure of what the figure meant with this gesture, he continued to stare in awe as it started to move about the room. It picked several balled up pieces of paper out of the trash and returned them to Roger's desk, smoothing them out and pointing at several key words and phrases previously deemed by the man to be bad ideas. He walked over and watched the creature. A god of books. A tale of a family. Something that will change the world. He looked up at the hooded thing, which had picked up the torn scraps and replaced them on the surface in front of Roger. And so he understood. He had found a being that could be manifested when written about. It was something that could literally change the world. He became inspired and empowered by this discovery and began frantically writing out notes and ideas. Good ones this time. He never noticed the creature he now knew as Ragravi disappear, but he knew that he'd meet it again. As he fell deeper and deeper into a writing frenzy, he came to many realizations, many stopped thoughts and many epiphanies about the thing he had found. This was something that deserved respect. This was something that deserved praise. This was something that Roger was born to do. And so, the first scribe of Ragravi came into existence. It wasn't hard to find people to join in the belief. After all, it was a religion based on a figure whose existence and power could be proven at literally any time. First came Roger's close friends, then their friends, until they numbered about 50 people. But soon enough, a wolf came to tear the believers asunder. They filed into the warehouse silently, but even so, their black tactical clothing made them distinctly noticeable among the sea of brown robes. <laughs> Laughter and talking transformed into silence in the space within just a few seconds. The screaming began when the agents drew their guns and began yelling and cornering them. The figure's hood fell to the floor, severed from the rest of his outfit by the attack revealing a faceless head with large, bloody holes scattered across the surface. Several of the hooded figures shouted in surprised delight at the appearance of the entity, which simply stood tall and silent. The blood began flowing more freely and turning darker and thicker with each passing second. Jerome, Jerome, kill it and kill them quickly. Burn the building down if you must. The man on his side nodded and sprinted off as Jacob once again lifted the cone shouting at the crowd with the tall, dirty figure remaining steadfastly erect in the center. Instantly, the faceless man seemed to shift to the front of the crowd, with his arms and legs outstretched like a star. Each blast shredded its already rough outfit, punching red holes all across its form. Agents were now openly firing at the crowd, but the being seemed to catch each and every bullet with its own body. As this continued, the ruby color dripping from these wounds darkened and a bubbling black liquid began seeping out. No! No! Jacob attempted to shout once more, but could muster nothing more than a rasp. Not yet! I can't be finished yet! He threw the object in his hand aside. Useless relic! God help me! God help me! He glanced up at the scene. The muck had completely covered the man's form and extended two additional limbs as it crashed forward. The roar of the cheering people was absolutely deafening. He watched as the creature bashed his men and enveloped their corpses with its filthy slime. I'm not ready yet. I have so much left to accomplish. I can't die here, not now. He was still reaching for his pistol when the creature's front leg slammed through his chest. 
The last glimpse of the mortal world Jacob Hunt experienced was utter blackness, surrounded by the cacophony of defeat. Remember to check out my new animation channel, The Rubber Talks, where I share my life story, thoughts, and opinions. Just click on the link in the description to enter the rubber's world. Before we end this video, we are proud to present these incredibly sweet pieces of fan art. A big thank you to all of you. You can now send us your fan art, and we will be more than happy to show off your best art piece in our next video. Check out our description below on how to submit. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Which SCP do you want to see in the next video and why it is interesting? Let us know in the comment below. We will draw your story and share it with the world. Don't forget to click like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell. Please share it to your friends if you like this video. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.